you 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 mentioned a book a couple of times. Is, is that younger you? Because I thought that was yeah. already published. It, it's not. No. Pu- it, it's scheduled to come out. It's scheduled to come out in January 2022. Yeah, it's there on Amazon, and it's going to cover. So it's going to cover all of our study. It's going to cover exactly what we did in the diet. It's going to go to the diet that we think folks can transition on, and it'll talk about how you can layer, you know, layer different interventions alongside this one. Um, and then I talk about, you know, more broadly my thoughts on DNA methylation, sort of DNA methylation through the ages, from gametogenesis and embryogenesis and on, kind of let what I opened with. And I actually talk about one other thing that I'm going to throw out there that I think is just so interesting and um, maybe pertinent in the longevity community. And that's the idea of biological embedding, where our experience, our life experience is translated into bio, you know, biochemically, um, you know, into DNA methylation marks on our epigenome. And like, that's kind of how mm. we, how we house our experience, how we, most of the research into biological embedding is around trauma experiences. Um, I think more should be around sort of wisdom and, and maturation and resilience, et cetera. I would like to see that, but it started, it's, it's, it's housed there, is, it's housed in trauma a lot. And of course, there's a lot of trauma for us to research and we can look at the heritability components of trauma like Holocaust survivors and, you know, even Dutch hunger winter and so forth. Um, But this biological embedding piece is fascinating. And I wonder, you know, I guess I can't help but wonder, and maybe you're anybody listening to this may have a response to me. um, You know, if we globally turn back the hands of time um, via, via DNA methylation patterns, I mean, will we undo some of these other biochemical marks that we may want, (laughs) you know, that we might want some of our, some of the, the, the softening of our, hard edges that happens with time. Interesting. Yes. I, I mean, I, I'm always fascinated that somehow the cell knows, uh, you know, how to make itself younger. It still remembers where it needs to put the methylation to be younger. And I, I, I mean, like Dr. Sinclair said, it's like, you know, there's a backup copy, but nobody knows where it is. And it's, that's, yeah, that's right. And so, but yeah, so maybe moving back would also remove some of the good parts of getting old. Older. <laughs> um, okay, thank you. So, last last question. We kind of. So, what is? Can I ask? What is your personal protocol look like? Um, is it anything like this? Or mm-hmm. yeah, it is. I do very well on. Like, here's my. You know, here's my lunch. <laughs> oh, right. actually, yeah. it's a little bit. It's a little bit. I usually have more veggies in there, but that I, I was in a rush this morning. Um, yeah, I follow the protocol. I eat the veggies and I do it in a relatively easy way. I have massive salads and um, I don't like liver, I'll be honest, but I do, I have decided to take liver caps because I think it's, um, mm. I think the nutrients in liver are extraordinarily important. Um I track my sleep. I, I, I find my, the aura ring oh, to yeah. be really helpful for, 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 for sleep tracking and data collection. Um, and it also has a meditation component that I find to be useful. So um, I do that. Mm-hmm. And what else do I want to say? Exercise. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an avid cyclist. I don't adhere to the 60 to 80%. I do just let myself basically right. do what I feel like doing since I've been um, you know, an athlete for a long time. And I don't I just don't want to let go. I suppose right. maybe if I get, I, I do track my own biological age and, and, and um, have responded similarly to our study participants. Um, in fact, we have a blog on the website we can link to where, where I present my data. Um, so yeah. I would say that I, that I adhere to the methylation diet and lifestyle with you know, some shifts from, because I've been doing it for a while. Um, I do take, actually, I will say this, I take polyphenol uh, compounds um, when I don't feel like I'm getting enough of them in my diet. So I'll take extra curcumin, I'll take some green tea or green tea extract because I don't drink a lot of green tea. Um, I'll do a little bit of, of, of quercetin. There's a compound called tartary buckwheat that is a polyphenol, um, just sort of gold mine. Um, and I, and I take that, I do take AKG. We didn't talk about the, the 
active mm. demethylation um, compounds. But I take I take AKG, um, which is a cofactor in the 1011 translocation enzyme. So the D, you know, active demethylators. Um, yeah. So I yeah. kind of I, I play around with a host of nutrients, and that's that's basically my protocol. Right. That's um. Yeah. It's interesting. So actually, you just one thought because I read in the paper. I, if you have a few minutes, I mean, it, we're on. Yeah. yeah. So I read in the paper that yeah, you, you said alpha ketoglutarate, but my understanding is that it's difficult to get alpha ketoglutarate from diet. That's right. Good question. We should have clarified that. So we, I mean, alpha ketoglutarate is produced when any protein, when any amino acid, excuse me, is broken down, like the first transaminase catabolic step will um, produce under certain circumstances alpha ketoglutarate as a byproduct of it. And so we can make it from amino acids, but yeah, it, it, so, so are we, you know, are we making it in sufficient supply or were we making more of it in our program? I, I don't know the answer to that. And it is true that it, we don't make it as efficiently as we age. I mean, it would be a, it would be a cool biomarker for us to look at. It, it's, when I went going back to when I was in the lab where we ran organic acid panels, we looked at alpha ketoglutarate all the time um, and looked for deficits of it and and would recommend people, you know, it, it's, it can be a marker of, of, of mitochondrial health. And so um, we thought about it kind of as such. Um, but it would be it would be interesting for us to just explore it a little bit more. Right. Interesting. OK, thank you. Uh, so do you meditate? Sorry. <laughs> I do. I do meditate. I'm, I'm not as, I'm just thinking about my, my friend that we were speaking about earlier, Josh, who was on your program, Josh Middledorf. Right. He's a, he's a, he's a ACE meditator and mm. I am, I have a toddler at home. So I'm, I'm <laughs> less disciplined with meditation that I would like to be. But one of the tools that I've been using, um, is um, University of Wisconsin has a free app um, loaded with all sorts of meditation guidance. And they have an active meditation that I can use when I'm on my bike. Um, and one of the other tools I've been doing is listening to Pema Chodron, who I find to be really grounding. And so I, I, I will admit that I'm not hitting my 10 to 20 minutes twice per day as we prescribed our study participants, but I'm doing the best I can within the structure of my life right now. <laughs> yes, I know the feeling. Okay, so <laughs> Dr. Fitzgerald, thank you so much. Uh, that, uh, so it gives me a, a much better understanding of the paper and, and some, of the, uh, some of the trials behind it, um, some of the difficulties you had in, in, in putting together really quite a, a, a very complex uh, study. So anyway, so thank you very, very much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Good questions. Thank you. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well, and we'll speak to you again soon.